Welcome, 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 friends. Anna Sugeri here. If we haven't met yet, I'm just a basic girl with a little extra. Well, today I have a lot of extra to share with y'all. So I hope that you have been tracking with me the last couple months. You know that we do interviews of people that bring a little extra inspiration and little extra encouragement and an extra laugh. And today it's no different. Well, it's a little different because I am super excited um, to, you know, share with you the wisdom, the laugh and, and all, all the good things that my super extra uh, guest is going to bring. But before that, also, if you're watching in the replay, please let me know by placing hashtag replayed in the comments. I can send you some virtual popcorn and you can join us with that. And don't forget to share, right? You don't forget to share, especially because today, like I said, we're going to lean into a very special topic. So we're in November. Can you believe it? I'm just like, where is the year going? As a mom, um, it's a new season all the way around because we started soccer. And um, I'm a little concerned about the weather, especially, you know, uh, the cold weather coming on because we've been suffering with a lot of heat in Texas that I was starting to get used to it. So we'll see how that goes. But, you know, because we have soccer season and among that, Thanksgiving and Christmas and buying gifts and all the little distractions as far as how we celebrate the holidays, right? I think that sometimes because we get just so busy, we lose track of real meaning of the holidays. I like to say this comparison, you know, like, is it holidays or holy days? Or what are the moments that we can catch those holy moments in the holidays. Uh, my family and I adopted this little tradition um, about serving on Thanksgiving instead of having like a big dinner and having everybody over. Not that it, that's not super fun, but we kind of moved that to Christmas. Christmas time, but uh, we feel like it's a time for us to serve and you might have different traditions. And I would like to ask you, how are you preparing your heart for the upcoming holidays? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. So I can be, you know, <laughs> talking and talking and talking, but uh, it's time to introduce my guest for today. His name is Rich Miller and um, I am super excited and super nervous because he's my boss. <laughs> so if I mess up, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> but uh, let me read you a little bit about Rich. Um, he is the manager of the digital interactions in the prayer center and has been with CBN since 2011. He and his wife live near Columbus, Ohio, and enjoy the outdoors, watching crime dramas and playing video games. And a bit history buff, Rich loves studying church history and parallels we can draw to modern day Christianity. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce you to my dear boss, Rich Miller. Hi, Rich. Thank you so yeah. much for being here. Yeah. Hello, Anna and anyone watching. Thank you. This is so fun. It's it's very organic and unrehearsed and just us. And like you said, basic with a little extra. And uh, I promise I'm just a, a servant leader. So so it's Thanks. just us. Uh, no need to be nervous. But but yeah, this is fun. And I'm sure you can tell by my my bio that we're just very basic people as well who, who love Jesus, but more importantly, are loved by Jesus. Um, so that's all right. Jimmy. I have something for you, though, because, you know, you accepted my invitation. Here he comes. Ready? 
<laughs> I also <laughs> don't fit. But I'm learning so much watching you do on this. I'm you're creative. Thank you. I love virtual confetti because it's fun and because I don't have to clean it up. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I, thank you so much for being here. And I, I want to start by asking you, what is your superpower? And I know we touched on um, that you work for CBN, but would you like to tell us a little bit more on how you landed there and what is it that you do in a more basic way? Okay, sure. Yes, we can go very basic. Yeah, my wife and I, so it was a, a little bit of the the tour of how we got to CBN. We were we were youth pastors in Ohio and had just felt a real drawing to Regent University, which is on CBN's campus. And there was just something about the Virginia, North Carolina area that that we were just feeling drawn to. And we had a friend that was going to Regent. And, and even though we were youth pastors, I was teaching at a Christian school at our church. Um, just to, and there was something there. And so when we visited the campus, I had been doing a degree online for um, through Regent on education, a master's mm -hmm. degree. And part of the requirements were that you go to campus to do at least half of it. So we were already looking that way. And when we visited, it was just so full of life. And uh, it was just clearly the Holy Spirit. And we were connected with the church there in North Carolina about an hour away. And it just, uh, yeah, we just had a longing in our heart. Um, there was not anything as far as that we were discontent with, with the church we were at or anything of that nature. We just knew we were mm -hmm. being drawn. And, and uh, so it took about three years before we moved down. And then while I was at Regent, somebody told me about the prayer center at CBN. I had no idea it was there. And, uh, you know, so I applied just for a job while I was in seminary at Regent and just getting to pray with people seemed like a, a no brainer. And mm -hmm. uh, 12 years later, you know, it's it's been wonderful being working at CBN. And I can fully say that what you see behind the scenes, the same Holy Spirit as what you see on the programs and and just wonderful people. I think that's been the mm -hmm. joy of it, both the joy of who we get to work with, including Miss Basic Anna <laughs> and uh, so many of our good friends. It's just wonderful. I mean, it is lifelong friendship and it's such a family environment in the prayer center. And so, I mean, who wouldn't want to work in an environment where there's 24-7 right. prayer and it really is like a prayer furnace. And and so Anna and I, we have the, the joy of serving the online community. And so digital interactions of many different channels, you know, you fill in the blank of Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, live chat, SMS, WhatsApp, emails, app reviews, list goes on and on. And so we just get to minister to the people that contact CBN or interact with us one way or another. And and uh, I tell you, Anna, is one of, you're one of our all-stars because, <laughs> because you do everything with both excellence and a heart for the Lord, and it just shines through. And so, so it, case in point, who would not want to work with a team or situation yeah. like that? So. It's been a joy working at CBN. I honestly never saw that on the grid for the future with all of our, our plans. And come to find out, my mom actually sang on the 700 Club in the early 70s, her and her Bible college <laughs> choir. So, and then my uncle, he was pastor in Virginia, Virginia Beach, and he was on the phones in the 80s. He filled in for a telethon, and he had been studying. Um, just it, it, It's so great, today's topic. He had been studying the the different feasts and festivals in the old testament and the jewish calendar and mm -hmm. the first day he was on the phones a man who was jewish called in and wanted to know about jesus and so my uncle was able to break down all that the holy days and everything and show jesus in them and and had the joy of of leading the man to jesus and so, wow yeah see the lord the lord knows what plans he has even when we have no idea what's coming of of the connections from our past so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Very basic, but very wonderful, Anna. Yeah. Well, I had the privilege to travel to Virginia a few months ago because my daughter um, lives there. You know, her husband is in the Navy and got to get a tour for um, Virginia University. It's huge, right? Humongous and so beautiful beautiful and it's one of those places that when you enter you feel it you feel the lord's presence and i'm like 
there's no doubt. I mean, like, this is just so beautiful. And that was actually my youngest first college tour, like officially. And all of us were like, wow, this is just amazing. So, um, you know, and, and it, I personally, since I started working at CVN, I can say that my life has changed drastically, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, for the good, obviously. And, and, uh, my faith has grown my, uh, my behavior. <laughs> my husband says I'm a little nicer <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so it, it is a privilege to, to work with you, uh, for you and, you know, um, just, just overall um, be part of, of such a great company. And, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, my, my daughter and I, she was born in 1999. And I remember when she was little, um, we will watch Gilmore Girls, you know? So the series is in on Netflix. And like a, a few weeks ago, she started watching the, the series again, like for the 10th time. And she's a super fan. And, I'm, and she's like, mom, you need to watch it so we can talk about it and this and that. So here and there, sometimes I have, I'm doing the dishes and I have it on the background. And yesterday I had it on the background and, and there's a scene where the mom and the daughter, they're talking and they're like, what are we going to do today? There's nothing to do today. Well, we're just going to watch the 700 club. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I, I heard it and I turned around and I was like, did they say that? So I turned around and uh, rewind it and they do say that. Oh, my, oh wow. my goodness. <laughs> my wife, I have a girl, uh, Gilmore Girls fan and we watched it all. I had the joy of watching it with her. Um, and <laughs> I didn't remember that part. That's so great. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it's such a privilege to to know the history and and just how big it is because, you know, sometimes we just feel especially, you know, when you're working there and I'm like, "Oh, I'm just in charge of this three pages and answering my emails and all doing my my work, right? But when you I'm like, "Oh my gosh, this is going out to the world. Thank you, Lord. And you receive messages from people in Venezuela and Colombia and, you know, all other places. And it's just how beautiful CBN has taken the technology and, you know, something from this world that God tells us not to be of this world, but use it for his glory. So I just love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. It's uh, and, never forget. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to no, no, no. You go ahead. You hey. Go uh, ahead. Yeah, never forget when we were on a call with our office in South Africa, and they were sharing with him. They had been on a call with the president of one of the nations in Africa, and and how he talked about that CBN had discipled their nation, that they were the, the number one disciple, not just the people in the nation, but he said the nation altogether in the sense of of just that was the voice of Christianity that their nation was familiar with. And it just shows that, and part of the legacy, you know, that we mm -hmm. have the joy of getting to continue to, to run with. And so, yeah, it's very humbling. And, and, you know, in the States, of course, you know, people know about CBM, but the outside of the U S is where the impact is even bigger. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many people internationally, it's just, it's mind boggling. I'm with you. Like when we moved down here, I was naive. I thought CBN had like 10 employees in one show. Right. You know, I had no idea. <laughs> just the yeah. full reach. Yeah. So, okay. The last question about work, but since I have you here, <laughs> what is your favorite thing about working there? And what is your least? favorite thing i thought you were gonna ask for tomorrow off so uh, oh. <laughs> well good. actually i have it off so it will be like over the weekend <laughs> yeah yeah there you go oh man favorite thing i think honestly favorite thing is just the the grace that comes with this with working at cbn like i'm you know, with being there 12 years i mean we all have good days and harder days you know outside of of work and i can say 1000% of the time that 
when I log in at CBN, there's just a grace and an ease that comes mm -hmm. with PS assignment, even on days when, when there's a lot going on and, you know, high pressure or whatever, there's yes. just a grace that is, it comes with it that I'm like, man, I want to know Lord, how to operate in this grace in everything in life. Cause, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I get it. The anointing is the anointing and it brings an ease, but yeah, I think favorite thing is just, the faithfulness of God and his presence that is unrelenting with CBN. I mean, it's no, it's wonderful. And so hardest thing. Oh man, that is a great question. <laughs> Anna. Great question. Um, I think I probably would say balancing the many initiatives that are constantly happening, that we're constantly pivoting to adjust to, and uh, you know more than anyone, right? Because you help implement those and how we we interact. And so not that, that, I mean, I love them. I love the opportunities, the creativity, the wisdom. But I think sometimes you feel like you are juggling plates, mm. and, uh, you know, like the, like the guy in the circus who's just running around trying to keep all the plates spinning. <laughs> and, you know, and so, so, yeah, that's probably the toughest challenge, but uh, still yeah. let's I have to say, not just because you're here, but it you make it seem so easy for us on the front. So like it's I understand as a being manager in the past and do all those things. And with all the changes that happen with technology rapidly, um, y'all make it so easy for us to see and, and seamless uh, on, on those struggles. But um, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. You know, our constant prayers, Lord, how do we keep the, the yoke easy and light, right? Yeah. With, yeah. with all of it, because it would be very easy to constantly carry things that the Lord doesn't call right. us to carry. Right. So, you know, Another thing that I um, I was super excited for you to share with us is because you're an amazing prayer man. Like I've heard you pray, and I'm like, like what? Like 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 let me. Can I rub that some of that on me? Like, how do you do this? So I want you know I created this banner. Can you pray do this? Education that is. <laughs> And education in prayer, um, you know, because we're facing the holidays and, and there is a lot of us that, you know, sometimes we get distracted. And I love that the, you know, be conscious that the enemy loves it, right? Like he wants to pull us out of uh, our prayer time and in being very um, intentional with our prayers during the holidays. So can you walk us a little bit about like, how do you prepare, first of all, to pray? Like, do you have some actual tools? Is it mentally? Is it, how do you spiritually do it? And, you know, somebody that is curious about like, well, you know, we hear this a lot. I don't know how to pray. What, what can you share with people about prayer? Yeah, thank you. It's definitely been a lifelong adventure for sure. I, I think naturally we pray or talk to God from a place of who we perceive him to be. So I think the value or the quality of prayer or the enjoyment from prayer, it really comes down to who we believe God is. Because of course, if our image of God is someone who is angry or not approachable or we're already feeling guilty when we're starting to pray or speak with him or listen to him we're naturally going to be on guard and it's not going to be a, uh, as much of a flow versus knowing who god is as loving and compassionate and kind and and wanting to spend time with us right. um, i say that because that was a big part of my journey even though i grew up in church and fourth generation in the ministry and all of these things there were first couple of years in Bible college, I felt like kind of an outcast because so many of the people around me knew mm -hmm. God's voice and they, a lot of time in prayer and I would have to force myself to pray. It was like just a routine. And it's like, you know, and I hear, I hear about people praying all night and all these things. And I'm like, Oh dear Lord, that sounds like drudgery. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I went through a, a period of some real health issues and and uh 
in depression and even was suicidal in Bible college just because of the wrong image I had of God. And I did not understand righteousness in Christ Mm -hmm. that is righteousness, not ours. And so I was working so hard and all of these things and can really burn out. And so learning to pray, even though it's a lifelong adventure and process was very much school of hard knocks of, you know, I read a lot of books and different things of how do we hear God's voice? And, you know, all of these things and, and went through a real year in the middle of the health issues of really learning to, okay, Lord, knowing your voice and, and what is God's voice? What is just us? What is the enemy? I mean, the Lord has given us personality right. for a reason, the way we think and process that's for a reason. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, what do, how do we know something is God? How do we know if it's the enemy? Is it just us? And all of those things. So it was a real process. And, and I think, you know, I'm naturally in a very analytical. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I know personally writing prayers out, just taking time to quiet and write. And, you know, scientifically they've proven and even studied people during prayer that it actually right. quiets part of your brain that allows another part to really engage and uh, really sense the voice of the Lord. And, and always God's voice is all, always lines up with scripture. That's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's, that's uh, God's voice 101 and prayer 101. And so, so of course, spending time in the word, you know, is really, really we're studying what's already been prayed as an example of what communion with God looks like. And not that it's a formula, but right. really teaches us, you know, what prayer looks like. And I think through that, you know, we, we learn to, how does God interact with us? Mm-hmm. And that's a big part of prayer because I know for me and, and uh, the Lord will use colors and people's clothes and numbers a lot to, to draw my attention to things that I wouldn't Mm. notice. You know, I don't go looking for those. I don't say that person's wearing a red shirt. God's saying something, you know, it's kind of more (laughs) like, like, you know, when someone, something catches your attention and then you you sense, okay, this is for a reason, Mm. right? You're Mm -hmm. drawing my attention to what, what is, you know, and a lot of times I'll just sense something to pray for that person based upon that. Um, and, and this is a, a unique thing, but a lot of times the Lord will use people's license plates where I'll just, uh, it'll draw right. my attention and it'll be like, whether a scripture will come to mind because of it or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, and these things are prayer because prayer mm-hmm. is communion with God, right? I think mm-hmm. it's very easy for us to think prayer is, is, and it's wonderful to sit quietly before the Lord and, and listen and speak with the Lord. And that is a big part of prayer. But if prayer is communion with God, then all of these things are as well and uh yeah. so definitely a process of learning god's nature mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. or we know his nature and how he interacts with us the, you know the more natural prayer becomes yeah. Um, yeah but i would love to same question for you anna like what would you share for pray education teach us as well well because i've been learning from the best <laughs> You know, <laughs> but um, I I feel like I've improved my prayer uh, life uh, since I started working at CVN. And, you know, I remember because I wasn't born and raised in a Christian home and there was certainly not Christians around me on my upbringing. So I became a Christian as an adult. And I think there is that little element of you know, being more rational than a spiritual when you start uh, trying to um, do all these practices as you become a Christian to create that communion and that connection with the Lord, right? And um, I I love that you said that uh, one of the first things is to identify who God is because I had an image of this angry God, like, oh, you're going to get punished for what you did. And, you know, like, it, it was very different of what I feel now. And, um, and no, not only feel because we can't trust our emotions all the time. They, they're not very reliable. Um, but yeah, knowing 
who he is. Oh, he's so forgiving and he's such a lover and he's just a redeemer, you know? Yeah. It, it, so recognizing who he is and how am I going to talk to you today, Lord? And I was... Um, I was at a training this morning with one of our, of our new uh, co-workers. That was such a, an amazing time. And I was giving him, he's like, well, if you give me a tip, I'm going to turn for a second because I want to show you this. If you give me a tip, what what will you say? And I'm like, well, this. This is my, um, my mouse pad thing, but it's paper. So you rip up the pages you know, oh, cool. That's and, smart. yeah, so it's pretty cool. But because, you know, I'm in constant prayer from come 100 to Facebook to this and that, and I'm learning at the same time, I write here all the names of God. I don't know if you can really see it. Oh, that's beautiful. But so, you know, like, okay, somebody wants to pray, wants me to pray for health, you know, like they're sick. And, and I'm like, oh, God is, or God who heals, Rafa. Oh, um, and so I put, you know, you know, we have a God, Rafa, the God who heals. So, you know, knowing who you're talking to, i and, and I love Hebrew words. I love Hebrew names. So I'm learning. And I think that that's, it comes back to, to what you mentioned, knowing who you talking, knowing who God is. And then the prayers are flowing. Like the Holy Spirit will mark and, and you know, give you all direction and what Bible verses to use and stuff. But as a beginner, I felt shame even sure. like when you're in a circle and like oh Anna prays and you're like ooh I don't I don't know what to say I don't know what to say and then as you keep doing it you learn that you're talking to God like you're talking to Rich. That's it. That's it. Well <laughs> yeah. said. Yeah. yeah. So that's my take on that. That's good. <laughs> that's, that's very good. And I love that. And I think you know a key a key with prayer, you you hit the nail on the head of it being natural because if if there's a point of frustration or it just feels like you're gritting your teeth just to get through it, like you're not enjoying that. God's not enjoying that. God's not expecting that of us. Why would he create us with certain personalities if he wants us to be someone we're not when we're quote unquote praying, right? That's right. and I used to be like that, man. It, it was it was very it was not and not that it's about feelings of how enjoyable prayer is, but at the same time, he is life and he is our breath. And prayer and communion with him is the natural um, result of that will be that we're experiencing his life in us, right? And not right. that we always feel it, but but if we're feeling things that are clearly not life, it's like then we've stepped out of the flow, even in prayer. Yeah. Whether we're we're viewing something the wrong way, like you mentioned, Anna, which was so good of whether we're experiencing shame or guilt or distracted or whatever, all these things that are clearly not in that moment, the mm -hmm. Lord, and it's okay to stop. I can't tell you how many times I've stopped and like where I'm just like swinging and during prayer in a sense of, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to make something happen and, right. and driving and pressure and then I'll stop and I'll be like, I'm sorry, God. I thought that that was you putting that pressure on me. Mm -hmm. And it's not. That's right. not how you operate. And when it becomes pressure and a yoke that is stifling, that's not mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. And and mm -hmm. I can tell you, Anna, like a lot of, of the lessons I've learned in prayer and communion with God has been more him peeling off what wasn't prayer that I thought was mm. like so mm. many thoughts I used to have that I thought were God and they were pressure and they were a yoke and they were heavy and they were frustrating and it was striving. Mm. And, and that is not how God is. I mean, mm -hmm. he'll the hard things. Absolutely. Yeah. But his life flows through us during those hard things. And when we feel like we have to make something happen, and I think this is a big key, are we praying from a place of what Jesus already did? Mm. Yeah. And already finished. Are we feeling like if we don't pray, God won't do it? 
Right. It's oh like, my oh, God. Like, we're the answer, not him, right? And it's yeah. very subtle and seductive because, of course, he told us to pray and ask and keep on asking. And if, you know, if you don't ask, you know, and so we understand that, but we're asking from a place of Jesus we pray that you reveal what you've already done in this situation on earth as it is in heaven mm -hmm. versus, okay, this person is sick. If I don't pray, God's not going to heal them. And there are many yeah. that believe that. And it's like, it's one thing for us to receive the healing on their behalf, but it's mm -hmm. almost the thing as if we're the ones that cause it to happen. And exactly. it's very subtle, right? It's very subtle. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you're you're totally right. I think that because of sinful nature, sometimes we take it up on ourselves. <laughs> like, oh, you know, or or like I've been praying for this particular thing for weeks and weeks and it's not happening. And then all of a sudden we turn it to him and say, like, seriously? I mean, like, come on, I've been praying, <laughs> like, deliver now. And that's not the way he operates, right? Like, what is the learning? Or like, uh, I, it's happened that, you know, um, I had surgery in my hand and I'm like, why me? Why me? And I'm like, oh, why not me? I mean, what am I going to learn about this? Wow, that's so, good, Anna. Thank you. <laughs> but good. yeah, because... Um, you know, my husband and I are doing a lot of learning of um, emotional intelligence. And, you know, we, we go to therapy and we're reading books and things like that. And I'm thinking like, okay, so what is the connection between learning how my brain works with my faith? You know, because we've heard unfortunately in church that, that those are two separate things, you know, science don't come together with, with the faith. And for us, we've been discussing it. It's like, no way. Like this brings Jesus alive. Like oh my knowing God. my, my hormones and how my cortisol prevents me from sleeping and how my neuro neurons are, 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 connected to my body and that having a stomach ache could be related to a sad way of thinking that I have. And that's how God is communicating to me. Hey, check out your thoughts. Let me that's renew good. your mind. That's <laughs> you good. Know? So. Wow. What um, a valuable lesson. Yeah. Well, it we're learning and it's been mind blowing, mind blowing. Um, I have a really good book that I will love to recommend because it's been amazing. So um, it's called M uh, Running on Empty. Uh, mm. uh, Jen Webb is the author, and it's an excellent book for you, for everyone that might be watching this. You want to get yourself a copy. Um, okay. But I'll put the link. Yeah, I'll put the link in the in the comments, and I'll send you the link. Well, Rich, I know you're such a busy person. <laughs> and this has been an amazing um, conversation and uh, just loving it, loving it. I wish we could stay here for two hours. <laughs> uh, but before we go, I always have something special for my, my guests. Um, a little game. Are you up for that? Sure, let's do it. Okay, let me pull up my happy fire questions. So I don't know what the wheel is going to pick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know it's nothing inappropriate, but <laughs> we're going to do five rapid fire questions. All right. So here we go. We're, we're going to click on it and see what it says. Ooh, describe yourself in one word. Oh, uh, encourager. Yay. I totally agree with that. <laughs> Favorite video game? Wheel of Fortune. Really? Yeah. I didn't know there time was time. a video game of the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. There are several, several different consoles. We played a lot on the Nintendo Switch, but... But yeah, okay. I guess if you're a true gamer, Mario Kart probably, but but we love the trivia type games. 
So no Roblox? I can't say I've ever <laughs> played. Is that what you like? I mean, you don't want to. <laughs> I don't know how, you know, my daughter used to play and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a headache. I can't even look at that screen. Old Testament or New Testament? Ooh, depends on the day. I love the stories <laughs> in the Old Testament, but I love the book of John, especially in New. So, yeah, what about you? How would you answer that? Oh, well, you can have one without the other. Good point. Good point. <laughs> but yeah. I would say that, like, my my favorite story is are in Exodus. Like, mm. you know, I feel that I get a lot from them, but I identify with Peter. I'm such a Peter, such a Peter. Like, I will cut somebody's ear, you know, without thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Favorite Bible verse. Oh, man. Again, this is depends on the day. It truly does. I and. I think life first is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own mm. understanding. Mm -hmm. All your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your paths. And yes, lean not on your own understanding. It's probably been the one the Lord is, has disciplined me with more than any other. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay. Turkey. turkey or ham probably ham what about you turkey turkey I yeah say, yeah you know we have um we have our neighbors over there we live like in the outskirts of houston so uh, they had turkeys and they will fly over the fence and come to my door and i will come and feed them feed the turkeys That's and smart. then it was kind of getting close to the, that was the first year we moved here we, it was getting close to thanksgiving and then all of a sudden we didn't have the turkeys visiting anymore <laughs> <laughs> your neighbors are hardcore <laughs> yeah i was like oh man i hope i hope they had a good thanksgiving all right here's the last one. Oh, like you're gonna love this one Wow. Facebook or Instagram. Great one. Oh, man. Used to be Facebook until Meta has just gone crazy and messed up so much. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, Facebook is probably, yeah, as you know, being older, we enjoy Facebook more but because yeah. we're used to it. But Instagram, I love I mean, it's, it's more creative. The, the visual effects are greater. Um, and so, so I would say Instagram, but I can't keep up with both with all we do with our jobs. So I just stick it's to Facebook. Crazy. Yeah. That's what about awesome. you? Are you Instagram? No, I I think I do a lot more Facebook than Instagram. Um, and of course, YouTube. Right. But it's not so much as a as a social media. But yeah, I, I think I spend a lot more. And but I did, too kind of got hard feelings in the last couple of weeks, <laughs> you know, for what they're doing to our 700 club page. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah. So now I'm like, okay, I'm going to Facebook. Okay. Should I click on this one or not? Like it, it makes me nervous, but anyway, so yeah. And because they, they actually did, um, there was something wrong with my account at the beginning when I started working at, at CBN and that created panic mode. So yeah, um, it's a love hate relationship. Truly. That's a good way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Rich, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing wisdom and this fun time uh, we have. I want to, if you don't mind, if you can close us in prayer. And I have a Bible verse that I feel that um, it's it's good for, for our soul as we are heading into the Thanksgiving month and, um, you know, just leave it here for our friends. But if you could, um, close us in prayer, I will appreciate it. Yeah. I love it. Love that verse and praying the scriptures is one of the best parts of prayer. So we will absolutely apply this. So Lord, you are the God of heaven. 
heaven and earth. And Lord, it's our joy to give thanks in this season. Lord, we just pause to say thank you. Pause to worship you. You alone are good. You alone are holy. And yet you've dressed us in your goodness and your righteousness and given us new life. And so, Lord, thank you for this season to slow down and just meditate on your goodness and your wonders and, and being thankful for all that you do. And, uh, Lord, for anyone that views this, that is longing to know you, whether they're aware or not, thank you for revealing yourself to them, for capturing their hearts, Lord, for drawing it, it, them into that place where prayer is easy. Lord, that it is a place of natural flow because you live in them. So thank you for revealing yourself to them, Lord, to the harvest. Father, we ask this and we thank you. And we ask you to continue to bless Anna. Lord, so creative, such a joy. And so we just thank you for your favor over her and her family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so, so much. That was wonderful, wonderful. So friends, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to visit faith52.com where you can get a couple of resources I put together in the um, gospel, the pumpkin gospel. It's a printout that you can do with your children uh, and present the gospel as you're carving the pumpkin. So that's mm -hmm. um, pretty cool. And there's all other resources in there. And if you want to connect with Rich, Rich, can I put your email uh, if people yeah. want to yeah, um, connect and yeah, ask cool. questions? Okay. Or yeah. are you going incognito? No, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> email is fine. We're good. <laughs> perfect perfect so thank you so much again for being here and um i i will see you tomorrow or not tomorrow but thursday <laughs> at work and friends don't forget to love jesus obey jesus and tell everyone about him thank you so much and god bless thank you thank you bye-bye <laughs>